This is Miss Kay. The Robertson family is telling it all in our new movie, The Blind. This is The Blind Movie Podcast. Here's the next episode. Hey there, I am Corey Robertson, and we are here back with another podcast about the movie, The Blind. We're so excited. Today on the podcast, I have two of the funniest Robertsons, which might be argued because the Robertsons argue about everything, but I actually think this is true. I have two of the funniest Robertsons, Cy and Miss Kay. Uncle Cy and Miss Kay is the way you know them and the way we know them. So... Not only the funniest, okay, but those that like to have a good time. That is true, too. That is both true, Both of too. us, have, we both like to enjoy life. Yes. For crying out loud. You can okay. laugh at yourself yeah. and at yeah. others. Yeah. And that's a trait I love and admire. So, I it's love you, too. It's funny to have a funny family. <laughs> it's, that's true. It really is. That, and this has true. been a wild ride. Uh, yes, it has. Take me back. Let's go back. Okay. Sigh at 12. Is, is he like he is now? Yeah. What's the, what Crazy was he like, like he could be yeah. anno- He could be annoying. So what did you think about Kay when she first came into the family? <laughs> well, no, no, because I, I always, she, she was my sister. Yeah. I have a okay, funny. I, she's always and, been my older sister. Let me tell you what Jan said. This is the funniest thing. The first day where I came to their house, we were going to like a banquet or something. So I had a long dress. I mean, I was decked out, oh, yeah, evening was dress. Out, looking it really was an fine. evening dress yeah. all fixed up. And I walked in and Jan said, Mom, Phil's brought a princess home. <laughs> That's what she said. That's so sweet. <laughs> well, you were said. like, you won a pageant. What What was the pageant that you were in? I've oh, seen a picture a of you. Oh, it was a beauty yeah. pageant. I got fifth runner up. Oh, that's, yeah. you should have been first, but. Okay. But it was fun to be in. I was actually in it three years. And then the fourth year, I didn't get in. I thought, well, I must all my lost all my looks in the first three or something. <laughs> but anyway, it was a fun thing. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about when you first came into the Robertson family. What did you think about? Because you came from you just had one sister, a smaller family. We had the biggest business in our town. We did. We had the first brick home in our town. Wow. I mean, we had things that you would look at this and think, well, that they don't look rich if I but. Considering the town of 200, we were. They were filthy rich. <laughs> we were. Okay, that, that was our outlook. For what out. was the sign to you that they were filthy rich? Like, uh, what did you, what made well, no, you be like? like you know, uh, uh, she had her own car. Thank oh. you. I knew you was going to say that. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Even though I had standard shift. Well, yeah, but still, I mean, hey, you had your own car. You had wheels, woman. <laughs> I did have wheels, Charlie. I just said it's like a drive. In, in, in their younger dating, okay, she was the wheel lady. I'm glad I did have a car because we were able to go out a lot more than we. Yeah. See, in Phil's house, everybody got one night a week with the car. But, I mean, you missed that your night and you've missed it because they yeah, no, had no, to take no, turns. You and you know what car it was? It was like a Falcon, like a Ford Falcon, not even big. Hold on, it's small. small. Yeah, it's small. For the whole family kids. couldn't even fit in the whole car. Yeah, because we was jammed in. I mean, y'all just, yeah. just y'all. <laughs> There's a scene in the movie where y'all bring groceries from your grocery store because y'all yeah. own yeah. Caraway Grocery Store. I did do store. that. I literally oh, she would did bring, that. She would bring a case of Coke. We'd drink them in about 30 minutes. Well, that was your fault. You That's were drinking 20, them all. 24 cans. We're drinking 30 minutes. And you were the lead okay, to do that. Okay, she brought all kind of all kind of goodies like uh, honey buns and all this stuff, y'all. Yeah, big old gone. cookies. That'd that'd they're like this gone. big, you know. Big old cookies that you got to have the cookie jar. And everyone knows that you're a good cook, Kay. So did you learn that from Granny or from well, your Well, I actually nanny learned or? it for, first from my nanny. Because yeah. I was with nanny. her all the time and did that. But what I found out once I hooked up with Phil was... He wanted me to cook just like his mother. So I actually had to change my style of cooking. Yeah. I she did was, that. She was, she was in and we'd have to come home every and weekend. I actually feel when they was dating, when she'd be in there with mom, helping mama cook. Phil, Phil would be watching too. Yeah. 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 He well, Phil's a good cook too. Cook, so. yeah. He's an excellent cook. But the point I wanted to make, mama was sharp as a tack, okay? She died at 94. And the woman actually, that was back when the doctors would hook electrical electrodes to them. And then the stupid sadistic doctor would sit over and play with the volume. 
Okay, so she had shock therapy. Okay, so for her do. to be as mentally capable as she was at the age of 94 was totally amazing. It amazed me. Yeah, it really was amazing. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, she and Bella share a birthday. Bella was born on her birthday. Uh, okay. And so whenever Bella was born, she came and stayed with me for a couple of weeks to help me with Bella. Oh, okay. And she was like 84 years old and helping with the baby and so sweet. And yeah, I feel like God really did a miraculous work I, in her life I, in no, her later years. No, it amazed me. Well, yeah. she had to raise those kids with... Uh, see, Paul had the oil field job where he was a driller, which is real good. But the problem was they didn't work all the time. Yeah. They would no work. Money. And when Lay they worked, yeah. they made really good money. But then they got laid off. He had to wait till the next job that he was qualified for. And that would put them with seven kids and no money. No money. Yeah. I mean, that's enough that's to tough. make anybody she, need she a rest. She sold Tupperware. Mama sold Tupperware. And then hey, she went to taught herself to be, you know, went to school and became a nurse. She didn't okay. really. It was hands-on school. She was yeah. trained under a real doctor. She didn't actually go to school. She trained under a real yeah. doctor, yeah. like, and she had on-the-job training. Wow. And was a good nurse. And raised she seven was. kids. And, and raised seven kids. And and put up with a, a hardcore <laughs> man. And so, okay. tell me about all of you brothers. Y'all were all athletic. You played sports. What? What was Jim, Jimmy was your Frank life? Robertson? Okay, my oldest brother is responsible for about half of the kids in the neighborhood uh, getting scholarship football scholarships. Really? Yeah, because he would make them play. Wow. I mean, they'd be out there crying. I'm serious. All right, get the football, boy. You're playing. Well, they all became good athletes because wow. of it. You so know? he trained all of y'all. He trained all of all of the playing football. Okay. Wow. Because he was growing up, he was actually we call him the warden. Because <laughs> when mom I, and dad was that. gonna go and play dominoes to the with the neighbors, Mac and, and Irene, all them and FM them. They'd leave Jimmy Frank, and he was just like a warden. We was in prison, and, you know, we, we'd always have a, you know, hey, we fix to have a prison break. <laughs> you know, watch him, and we'd watch, and, hey, you know, we'd, we'd pile out of the window and take off and go down there and play with our cousins. That's yeah. funny. So were you into sports, too? Did you play football? What did I you played, play? but I was too little. I was too, you know, uh, it, you know, I was actually, I had the talent. I was just too little. Yeah. Yeah. So in the movie, we have a few different actors playing you. Did you get to meet any of those actors? No, I didn't. I would have liked to met the guy that played me because, uh -huh. you know. Uh, what did you think about it? He, he done a fabulous job. Uh -huh. you know? I actually think you did. We had that crawfish bowl here. I think you met one of them. Well, you I might mean, not have even realized. I did, I, I mean you might not people. have even realized yeah, he was yeah, the one who played yeah, you. But, yeah. yeah, he. I thought he did a great job. He did. Good, yeah. And good. it just, uh, it kind of shocked me when when he first came on the scene in the movie. Everybody just yelled. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it's, uh, that's why I, I said God, I'm, I'm living proof that God, all three of them are alive and well. Yeah. My life shows that, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the amazing thing about the Robertson family, you know, is I can I look back, and God's always been there. That's right. Front and center. Yep. I mean, right. everything we were involved in, God is the center point on all of it. Yeah. This is Miss Kay. And Uncle Si. Thanks for checking out the Blind Movie Podcast. When you see this movie, you'll know that redemption isn't out of reach for any of us. On the blind, on digital today. Visit theblindmovie.com. And the funny part was, like, go through military basic, go to AIT. Look, 30, 300 guys in, in the company. A to R. Going to Germany, to Korea, all this. Hey, Cy Robertson, Vietnam. After that, 
All the rest of them went to Germany and, and Korea too. One man out of that class went to Nam as me. Wow. And I found out later that it, that was just, they sent them to Germany for like two weeks training and then sent them to Vietnam. Oh, okay. okay. So everybody ended everybody up in ended Vietnam. Up. But it just looked bad because everybody asked me, he said, man, who did you take, you know, make mad? <laughs> He said, you're the only one out of the whole company that was chosen and had to go to Vietnam? I said, oh, and, uh, who knows? Well, one of the stories that Willie's told about you coming back from Vietnam, that you brought some sleeping bags, oh, yeah. some Army sleeping bags that they got to sleep in and that they love. They love when you brought back Army stuff for them. No, no. Every time I would come in on leave, I would spend it with Phil and Kay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when I did, whatever I come, okay, I was, I was in supply. So I got all kinds of uh, all this army stuff, you know. Yeah. I just bring a whole duffel bag for them and, and give it to the kids, you know, which they yeah, love it because Jason wore he wore that cap I gave him for forty years. Yeah. <laughs> He's duck hunting with that that oh, one that, cap. Yeah, I remember that cap uh, that came from you. Oh yeah. 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 He wore it because it was it's comfortable and it's warm. Warm. Yeah. 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 But he wore that. He he I he literally wore it slam out, you know. Wow. Yeah, Willie well, remembers Jason those. would love it since he's the one named after Sauce. Oh, no. That's, That's why we can't get along. I know. Jason Sauce. <laughs> I'd, ne I'd never realized how much we kept him when we was living in Jungle oh, City. Oh, you did. You did. When he was a baby. We kept him oh, a did lot. You? Really? I mean, okay? I, he, he was a he lot of He got a lot of my mannerism. I mean, yeah. Phil even threatened me one, or said something to me one time. He said, if I knew the thing wasn't, he said, you wasn't here. He said, "Boy, if you had been, I'd have been worried." <laughs> you know, he said because okay, that, so he said that he said he said I've had you with me forever. Yeah. He said because when I when I come up there on the river and ask Phil, "Hey, your woman's having that baby. What do you want to name him?" And he said, "Hey, tell her to name him after you." I said, "You crazy rascal." Yeah. So yeah. Phil was fishing when you had Jace. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Si, you spread the news. She went. She said, "Hey, go find that brother of yours and ask him what, you know, what are we gonna name this child?" Wow. I picked out the Jason. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. picked out the Si. Yeah. And he said, "Hey, name him after you." I love it. That's great. You mentioned Jackson City, Arkansas. So did you? Y'all live? You and Christine live there yeah. as well? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah. So you when remember we, the when days? When we actually left, okay. I actually got out of the army and got married the same day. A judge waived like five days of all this paperwork junk, you know. And he said, "Are you sure you want to do this?" He said, "You just got out of from under a three-year contract. You're fixing to sign one it's for a lifetime." Yeah. So hey, we got married and jumped in that Plymouth. And we had never met her, and they just came in late at night, and we'd had the back room fixed up, which you know it wasn't. It was a big old house, but it wasn't fancy at all. But they had a big bed and all that back there. And we were just like, and here comes Son and his new wife. You know, we'd never met her, knew her, or anything. They just moved in the back bedroom. Wow. So that's where we, yeah, that's where we first that lived. That was your early years yeah. of marriage yeah. were yeah. together. Yeah. The best part of the movie, in my humble opinion, was when Phil finally, Bill come out there and found him in the trailer, you know, and was trying to talk to him. And Bill said, oh, just come on out here. It's so pretty out here, you know, and let's talk out here. And, and when Phil said, well, you know, I, 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 don't, I, don't know what I, I don't know what I need to do. You know, he said, I'm to the point, I have no ideal what I need to do. And when Bill... It's called you know, hitting bottom. Yeah. yeah. No, no, hold on. And then when Bill said, well, hey, look, the old Phil's got to die. Yeah. And I told Phil, when Al Bowling and them showed up one time, I'd come in on leave. I was down at Phil's house at the river. And they showed up. And uh, said, hey, right, come on, let's go get drunk. Yo, go run the women. And Phil said, y'all don't understand. The fellow y'all looking for... He's dead and buried and good riddance. Yeah. 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 I said, that's the best thing you've ever told me is when I heard you tell your wow. friends, no, nope, that fellow's dead. Yeah. 
and it, and he, it's good that he's dead and it's good riddance. Yeah, that's when you knew true life change. Then happened. I knew, okay, <laughs> yep, he's actually he's actually he's free now. Yeah, he's actually got rid of the devil. Yeah, because Kai used to tell him up to his face, "You are the devil." That's right. The devil's living in you. I would say that. Yeah. Lot. Yeah. Kay, what was your favorite part of the movie? Ooh, well, it would have to be, you know, when we got back together, you know, and everything. And I remember in real life, you know, uh, and I was in that apartment, and when he came home with me, the boys were just so excited because we'd been apart. And then Bill came there to study with him all, which they, they wanted to be with their dad, but they knew he needed to hear what Bill was saying, so they were very good to stay good till Bill left and then they hugged him and talked to him and just trying to tell him everything he had missed, you know, by being away from him. And uh, and then I remember so much of them saying when they went to bed, they said, Will you be here in the morning? You know. They know, expected him just to leave. Yeah. The other part of the movie was that, that it showed how scared the kids were of him. Well, they were scared when he was drinking. Well, no, no, that's why. As, as yeah. only when he was drinking, it was like two different people, the good and the bad, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, 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 and that's what I wanted to tell them when they first talked about the movie. They talked like well, he was bad all the time. He wasn't. He was a great person. Everybody loved to be around him. And I could go up like when I went to, to the get him or do something like after he got through. Uh, coaching when he was coaching and teaching and all that. And the students would be all around just listening to him tell stories. And he's always commanded an audience and had them and people want to listen to him. So he had a lot of good qualities, yeah, wonderful qualities. And that's what I fell in love with. And see, Phil was really good when we first were together. I tell you, college changed him, ruined him. I would no. say because God the was, evil, the evil of, God. and they did so separate. And maybe it's because they didn't have a lot of married college athletes, so they made the married college athletes stay in the dorm a certain amount of time during the year, which was not good on a married yeah. man. No, no, with that children. Was, one of the other yeah. things that the movie did for me is, uh, is I actually became angry at Al Bolton. Yeah. Okay. And, well, and, I, and, I, and for all of his friends in college, I disliked all of them. Okay, because well, they, you'll they find, led him astray. Well, that's right, and you can see that, and it's like, and then when you get on the right side of God, you see them coming, it's like you automatically think this isn't good because your, your mind will go there. But back then, Phil wanted to be popular. He wanted to be Honcho, the head man and all that, and he loved for people to love him and hear him talk and do all that. So he would draw the crowd and not worry about the good and bad, you know? Yeah. yeah. One thing no. that Phil told, I remember him talking about that was impactful for me was whenever, after he changed his life, after he came to Christ, he got a job teaching at a Christian school, That's the one right. that I ended up going to. That's right. That's and I remember right. him saying that just being around people that love God, mm -hmm. being around, seeing young people that love God and were trying to make good choices impacted him. Well, it did. Hey, that it, it's way easier, okay, it's the deal about who you run with. You will be known. My mother told me this when I was a teenager. You will be known by who you run with. That's right. Who has the most influence on your life? Yeah. The people you run around with. That stuck with me my whole life. Okay. You will be known by those you associate with. Mm -hmm. And Phil didn't, didn't learn that. Yeah. Okay. Because his friends actually pulled him down. You know, and that's why it. it hit him so hard when Bolins gave him the news about, hey, I could go any time. And Phil was so happy for him when he finally came to his senses. They come in, you need to talk to me. I'm ready. I Twelve hear, years I after hear, Phil became yeah. a Christian. Wow. Yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear what changed. What changed you? Because mm -hmm. Bolin had asked him, something's really different about you. Yeah. What is it? You know, and Philip, Philip, Phil told. Him. Yeah. I feel like that part of the movie is going to be a part that people are going to see and think, oh, they just made that up for the film. No, that's real. That's real. Really, that's real, folks. A, cu a couple of things that I, that wasn't yeah. 
in the movie that just because they couldn't do everything mm -hmm. was uh, one of the nights. Well, the, you, it did have the bathroom night when I was in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. But what they didn't do is my boys were outside the bathroom door because I was crying in the bathtub, you know, in there and all that. Yeah, but that's really what made like you it. make the decision you well, made. Well, that's because Alan said, Mom, yeah. but don't cry anymore. Yeah. Because his, Jesus his exact, is going to take care of this. He said, yes. He yep. said, God's going to take care of us. Yep. So don't cry yep. anymore. That's what wow. he said. And then what I remember the most is Jason was saying, what did, what did she say? What did she say? And then I heard Willie go, he's sucking these two fingers <laughs> as a little boy. <laughs> the fuck, I could hear that you, going. I'm laughing because the, the time, the, the things, the times when, you know, that are important. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. as a kid sucking on his thumb, telling me what, These two you know, fingers then, what I'm saying. What did what she say? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so well, there just, were some things the boys said after Phil got baptized that we had put in the movie, and they ended up not making it. But tell those. I thought those were so funny. What you said that Jason Al said after Phil got baptized. One of them said something like, "I hope Dad doesn't cuss in church." Oh yeah, <laughs> that was Alan. He said, "Mama, I'm gonna die if Daddy cusses in church." I mean, he cussed it all the time. How will he not? <laughs> How would he know not to do that? And I said, he'll learn. Yeah. But he may make a mistake. And I will say, I'm going to get under the pew if he does that. I just want to understand it. That would be so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, he did that. And they were worried about no, how see, he was going to act. But Phil asked, you know, he told me about him and Bill Smith having a talk one time. And and said, Bill, when am I, I, when am I going to get rid of yeah. all these feelings I'm battling? Yeah. And Bill Smith said, well, how long How long did you run with the devil? That's what he said. Bill said, how long really did good you run with the say. devil? And that Phil said, good. well, that'd be yeah. 28, 28, first 28 years of my life. He said, well, hey, give it a little time there, brother. Yeah. He said, you're going to have to. No, he didn't. You know, really what get what bad you don't got understand is it. It was you've got to get yeah. rid of this, what you've been doing, and then you've got to replace it with what God wants you to have. And that takes time. And that yeah. takes time. Yeah. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is so important. Okay? Yeah. That you've got, if you've got anger issues, you've got to get rid of the anger and replace it with something like joy and self-control. Well, there's a line in the movie, actually, after Phil turns his life around, that you actually say that to him, Kay. You say, you're not going to be perfect. That's and right. I know you're not. Well, I did. I did. That's why and we made him. And everybody knows that, like at church and all. They'll all know that, that you're trying. But you, you just don't happen overnight. You don't just quit cussing. I mean, thank goodness he didn't cuss in church. But, you know, just the way he was with people, like they'd go to hug him, and he'd say, what you doing, what you uh, doing? Yeah, I mean, that was real yeah. odd for yeah. him. Yeah. That wasn't a natural thing to do, so he felt odd when people did yeah. that. And I remember one of them was Marge Moran. Because she hugged him and kissed him on the cheek, an older lady at church. And he said, why does she do that? That's what he told me. Yeah. I said, because she really loves you. He said, I think she does. Wow. I think she really well, does. But okay, I remember Kay I, I always telling him, I have to tell him, tell him, hey, look, they don't mean nothing. They're just trying to tell you, hey, right. we understand. We understand and, and we, we love still you. love you, dude. Yeah. You know, he had we, never really experienced yeah, that. He no, didn't know well, he, he actually even said, he said, I don't know what love is. Wow. Right, he did say that. Yeah. He actually said, he said, I don't know how to love. Wow. You know, that's why I said him and dad both were, were hard men. Because if, if you showed emotion, they took it as weakness. Yeah. They did. That's true. You know, and that, that's against their manhood. Yeah. That's an insult to their manhood. Just because you're tender, dude, don't mean you're you're a jerk. You know, come on. Yeah. You know, it he, means a human for crying out loud. But see, Sorry. when he came Sorry. back, and I don't know if this was in the movie either. I don't know that it was. But when he first came back to talk to me, and he had that old truck out, and me and my girlfriend had just come back from lunch, and I worked upstairs at Howard Brothers' home office, and we, I would just went up the stairs, and we looked out the window, and there was his truck, and he was sitting there, kind of leaned against the steering wheel. And she said, my friend, my girlfriend said, oh, no, he's up there in the parking lot, and he's probably drunk and passed out. What are we going to do? 
And I said, we're not going to do anything. We're going to work. And hope he didn't come up here, wow. you know, and been drinking or mm -hmm. something. And that would be a nightmare for yeah. me. Although I didn't think nobody would take that. They wouldn't punish me for his actions. Right. Mm -hmm. But I was just afraid. You don't want to be embarrassed. Yeah. Well, right. I think the, my member, some of you and said I about, went out there. I hope he don't c cause trouble. Yeah, and I no, went out no. there to talk to him so that he wouldn't come in, and I was afraid I'd lose my job because if they thought he was going to come up there and cause trouble, you know, it could cause me to lose my job. Yeah. And then how would we make it? So when you went out there, you and were I thinking... opened the door. He he had, he raised his head and he had just been crying and crying, and I'd never seen him in that way. It was so humble and so different that I was just, I didn't know what to say. I was so shocked. And he said, I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't do anything. And I said, why? He said, because I lost my family. Yeah, because I've lost the one thing that's more important than any of it. Wow. He said, I lost my family. Yeah. He said, I want him back. He, he wow. was this close for all of it to be going away. Yeah. No. And that's when I saw the humble feel, and I thought, oh, please let him stay just like this. So I told him, I said, well, let me go call Bill Smith, because that's the only person he wanted to talk to. And if he can, just meet me here at my work, and then you follow me to my apartment, because he didn't know where I lived. He had no idea. I didn't let that be known. And uh, Bill Smith will come over, and he'll talk to you. That's the only way I'm going to let you come see the kids or anything. So that's what happened. And Bill met with him, you know, one night and then two nights. And but but I agreed to let him stay after the first night there. But then, you know, when they went to the church, and I don't think they showed this exactly the way it was, but I understand they couldn't do everything exactly. But when they actually came to the back of the church and we were back there, you know, right before Bill baptized him. And I remember uh uh, and I want to say it was Jason that said, is Daddy really going to be good? Is Daddy really going to be good? And I said, yeah, he's going to be a new person. I said, but we all got to help him. He don't know how to be good. So we have to help teach him Jace how to be good. Jace actually said something after the movie that, that he, he said, I was, a, I was a lot like that. It made Jace the man he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To see his dad, see yeah. see the change. See, right. Willie couldn't remember. Right. Okay. But it was, you know, he saw what Jesus could do in a person's life. Him and Al both. They, yeah. they knew, yeah. but not, yeah. not Willie because he was... Because it's, it's one thing to say something, okay, but it's another thing, okay, are you really, you know, do you walk to walk and talk to talk? Yeah. I do okay, remember. Okay, so that was that was the main thing that all of Phil's friends that he run with. Yeah. They saw the change. Mm -hmm. And it literally, and it showed it in the movie, it literally scared them. Yeah, yeah. How much he had changed. Because they was drinking there one in one of the rounds, a bunch of cars or something, having a big party, and, and it bowling, it, yeah. you know, it scared both. Yeah. I would say that moment affected all your family, of course, forever. Mm -hmm. But you see the change in feel, but also the forgiveness and grace that you offered affected all of the marriages well, you know, past well, then. And I didn't remember Lisa went this. Through. Let me tell her this. That that it, when when Jason, I mean, no, it was Willie, became a little bit older. And, you know, we'd talk about the bad stuff with Phil, you know, and all that. And then I remember he would say, don't. Don't talk about my dad. Don't talk about my daddy. Don't talk about my daddy. He would put his hand up like that. Don't talk about my daddy. Because to him, he only knew the good feel that he could remember. And see, that other when we would talk about the bad feel, yeah. when he was not saved and all, he didn't want to hear it. Yeah. I do remember that. Well, one of the things I think that when people see a movie like this, and that's why I think it's so important for Phil to understand. And, you know, even though it's hard for him to show those parts of himself that were mm -hmm. bad and the hard times that y'all went through, when people see this movie, they're going to relate. So many people have experienced mm -hmm. either 
coming from a family that had alcoholism That's or right. experiencing themselves. And I think that there's so many pieces of this movie that people are going to relate to. So they're not thinking about, oh, that was Phil. They're thinking about themselves. He finally hit rock bottom and yeah. finally realized, okay, all this other junk that I've been involved in has no meaning, has no value. Yeah. I'm fixing to lose the best thing I've got in my life, my woman and my kids, for crying out loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my question. Like, what would you say to somebody who is in that position? You, you've got to come to a knowledge of the truth, okay, about yourself, okay? In and of ourselves, okay, we've got a couple of problems that we can't solve. That's why we need Jesus Christ so much, okay? Because we've got a sin problem, okay? We're going we're to stumble and trip and fall flat on our face. We're going to do things that are against God's law, against man's law, okay? And, and like, if a person has never did anything that they need to have forgiveness for, then you, you won't understand the love of Jesus. If you're walking through a place where you have to forgive somebody who hurt you in a lot of ways, how do you do that? Well, I think you, number one, you have to find God and know that God can help you and that you'll never be alone. And you're, it may not work out, but you've got to love God and say, I can make it. I mean, he put me here and for me, it was so easy to think, I've got these little boys. I mean, what are they going to know? Only what I teach them. Yeah. And we'd pray for their daddy every night and everything. And then, I mean, I would tell them, I'd say, the reason your daddy acts the way he does is because the devil has got inside of him and he's leading him. But we need God to get in him and him to lead him. And that's what this whole thing is about. Because you see, when he can be nice, he can be good, he can be funny, he can make us have a good time, all kind of things. But when the devil gets in, a whole different Don't person it, yep. appears. Yeah. And whole yeah, different, whole different and he wouldn't day. remember things he did. He didn't remember things he did to me or anybody. And, you know, he was just so rude and all that. And even things... He would ignore the children. But the best thing that I will say that Phil ever did was in those 10 years, he never had alcohol, any of his drinking thing, at our house. Mm -hmm. It was never there. So if he wanted to go out and drink, he had to go out and drink elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, none of that was ever at our house. And he did not do that at our house, wow. ever. Yeah. But he would, every time he left, that's why the boys wouldn't want him to leave because mm, yeah. they didn't know that he'd come back bad and not good. Well, it sounds like you had some uh, trust in God and what he could do in your life and what he could do in Phil's life. I did. And that's what helped you to forgive but and see, offer grace in the hard times. And I think that you need to think about, like my grandmother always talked to me about that and about the marriage and I'd have to fight for my marriage and I didn't understand that at all. Yeah. But she explained it all to me that the devil was going to come in and try to tear our marriage apart. And see, that really happened. And I saw it as plain as she told me about it. And then I went back to what she said, and I thought, she said, you just never give up. Just don't give up. And I remember when that, uh, when I met with Bill, you know, and when I really thought, he's not going to change. And... Uh, that horrible feeling that was there because I always had the hope he will change, he will change, when nobody else did it. And I'm going to tell you something. I had everybody against me. They wanted me to leave him. They wanted me to just cut it off with him. And and I was standing on like an island alone, me and my kids. Yeah. But that was hard. You, the was most something. important thing you said about this, though, was that you're not alone. Yeah. yeah. And your daughter, Sadie, I heard her speak at the church, mm -hmm. and she spoke on two things. Know your enemy and know the promises of God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. exactly That's correct. Right. The I devil, folks, the devil is real, mm -hmm. okay? And he wants, he wants one thing. He wants your death, 
Okay, God, on the other hand, he's real. He wants everything best for you. He wants you to have the best of everything. And then, you, like Sadie said, you need to know the promises that the Almighty has made to the human being. You're never alone. Yeah. And the thing about it, everybody says, well, how could you tell this whole horrible story? And that's what Phil said. It's so embarrassing to me. But if your story, Phil's story, our story can help anybody's marriage, and it will. their life, or bringing them and to Christ, will. help mm -hmm. them with their kids, nope. anything, it's all worth it. Yes. So don't be embarrassed. You, right. you have to let pride go. Right. And just say, this is it. And if you think of something else we did that was bad or worse, tell me. I'll tell it in the next speech. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we pretty much gutted it all open yeah. anyway. Because it's what God has done in your That's life. That's right. That is, it's giving God the glory. And you life. can get through the worst circumstances on earth. You can get through them. Because I did. Yeah. And I do remember the, the sadness like in that bathroom. And that was the first time in my whole life I said, I wish I could just go to sleep and not, not wake up. Yeah. But the minute, even after those words were in my head, I thought, what about those three little turkeys out there? Yeah. What about them? <laughs> Leave them to him. That'd be a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. And it, it went away. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I mm -hmm. taught myself and yeah. prayed right through that. Yeah. But I thought it. Yeah. And I would tell people it's not wrong. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are get to that point and think that. And they don't want to tell anybody, but it's yeah. okay. Yeah. That's right. It's okay. It just meant you were the last place you didn't know. You lost all hope. Yeah. And that's where the saddest place is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But with God, there's always hope. That's right. All right. Well, thank y'all. It's been awesome. I'll always love hearing your stories and your wisdom. Well, one thing I can do best is talk. <laughs> and size proved he can talk more. <laughs> y'all are both good at that. <laughs> <laughs>